Tell me when, and I'll clap us in. All right, here we go. That's so they can sync everything. Gotcha. Yeah. So, hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast, the official podcast of the Tattoo Improvement Network. Uh, go to tattooimprovement.com and sign up for our mailing list if you want. Um, we'll send you all kinds of recipes uh, for what? Who knows what? Yeah. Tons of stuff. Uh, we're here um, part two or maybe part three. I don't know if we broke Guy's interview into two, but um, at, uh, here at Hyperspace, Hyperspace Studios with Michelle Wortman. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. This place is awesome as we were just talking. So I, I want to start along maybe along the same lines a little bit that I started with Guy. You guys recently built, uh, within the last year or so, built this big addition yeah. on the studio. And I'm kind of a studio junkie. I love to see pe where people work and like how they set things up. E and you know, even more than artist studios, like um, wood shops, workshops, you know, like these right. little where people have like planes and they hang them all on the wall and they're dimly lit and stuff. So I just love to see people's work areas. So um, I, I, I built a painting studio outside of my house. It's mm. a, a simple rectangle that there's not much to it because I was on a budget. Mm -hmm. um, you guys had, a, you know, a, you're building in a beautiful place and you had... You, you were able to build off of your existing studio. What to you was your kind of short list of things that you wanted, if anything, in a new studio? What were you looking for? Okay. Um, well, one thing that's important to Guy and I is a lot of natural light mm -hmm. because we really like um, the feeling that you get when you're in light and just um, a sense of loftiness and almost like an art gallery, like what you'd yeah. see when you, either when you're a pa ideal a dream painting studio is actually how we built our tattoo studio because hmm. we kind of approached it just from an artist mind where we wanted a lot of space and light and high ceilings and a sense of loftiness around us just to have mm -hmm. um, like kind of just a good workflow and yeah. not have any kind of restrictions um, in our space that, c that felt uh, psychologically confining to us. Yeah. And for yeah. our clients too. Yeah. Yeah. He mentioned that, that the client's experience was a really important part of it and that it was kind of a, almost like an escape or a little getaway for them, which I, this place obviously is. It's not yeah. like any tattoo studio I've been to. Um, uh, so, and, and obviously a lot of, a, a lot of natural lighting and cool little like living area, which hopefully we're clipping some of that stuff in like a little kitchenette, things like that. Yeah. Um, do you feel like, so you've been working in this setup for um, how long now? I think that we've had our studio for about 13 years. 13 it's it's kind of, I've lost track of time. I've been tattooing for 17 years on Halloween. Okay. So, okay. uh, I started, it's, it's off, off topic, but kind of relates. I started tattooing at tattoo conventions. That's how I learned to tattoo. Oh, really? Cause we at lived conventions? at conventions. I never oh. had like a normal upbringing and tattooing and that's why my style is a little bit more unconventional too yeah. even what? though it was like at convention <laughs> that it's unconventional but um then we finally built our studio we had a workplace so oh. we, we kind of approached tattooing with guy first being the tattooist and trying to figure out how we could create a studio um for him and then i, I had no idea that it would also be something i'd be sharing with him yeah later. yeah so how how did it work that you started at conventions why, why? Uh, well that was where we were traveling to work because we okay. uh we, we first had a remote location and it ha this building hadn't even existed mm -hmm. when we first started when i first started tattooing it was just okay. an idea like oh we should turn that building into a tattoo studio and it we were he was chipping away at it i was you know indirectly supportive of it but i mm -hmm. didn't really help too much with it um, so we were traveling for work because we had moved from Chicago to the country. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started um, having an interest in wanting to tattoo. But the only resources that were available to me at the time were when we would travel and I would be in a situation where there were people wanting to get tattooed. Yeah. Because we didn't really have that here yet. You know, we right. hadn't built that. So you were in the house here. You just didn't have a working right, space. Exactly. Here, right, exactly. So the only place Guy could tattoo was, was at conventions. Was at conventions. Um, Wow, that had to have been a challenge. I it, mean, it was, yeah. It was really hard. Yeah. I mean, and also having my work next to his where he's so uh, advanced and evolved and mm -hmm. I was just trying to figure things out with all that pressure. It was it was yeah. really difficult, but it was good because I knew nothing else, so I just tried my best and just kept chipping away. Mm -hmm. And a lot of attention, obviously, working next to Guy and being early on and just trying to learn how to make a tattoo machine make marks right. that stayed in the skin well, was probably like, I'm sure you were sweating bullets a lot of days. I couldn't even ask him a question because he was busy and <laughs> right. I didn't have, you know, he would just say stretch, stretch, stretch. Like he was always telling me uh -huh. that was the thing I needed to do the most. I mean, and also challenging uh, to try to tattoo without black and um, doing a lighter aesthetic yeah. was my idea in my mind, but I didn't really know how to um, turn that into a tattoo. And it took, uh, I would say, a good 10 years before I feel like it started to really look yeah. like where I wanted it to go. Yeah, that's really, you You were set up with a lot of obstacles, yeah. I guess some of them self-inflicted, with, with intentionally not using a lot of uh, of, of black line work right. and things like that. And, and we all know that that's, that's a challenge. What did you find trying to 
because you obviously had an idea of, of the direction you wanted mm. your work to go, but you probably quickly noticed the shortcomings of Absolutely. not using black and tattoos. What, yeah. what did, how can you explain kind of that, your thought process, what made you take that approach and mm. then the, and then kind of the hurdles that you had to overcome? Okay. So, um, the reason I started tattooing and the reason why I had an I will say an issue with black is because the, the early work I had in me from the 90s had a lot too much black in it. Mm -hmm. And it felt like from my perspective of not being a tattooist, kind of heavy and dense. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it was very feminine from what I wanted to see. But I wasn't a tattooist. I was just a collector, mm -hmm. you know. And I was in this tattoo scene because I was associated with Guy. who was his girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I kept questioning, why, why does a tattoo need a black outline? Why can't it be lighter and airier, you know? And people would tell me, because it can't, it just it can't, it won't hold up, it doesn't look good, you know, just hang it up. You're not a tattoo artist, right. you know, just just deal with it, you know. And so I thought, well, why not? I still kept questioning it. So that motivated me to want to learn to tattoo and find out for myself. Mm -hmm. And, it, and I'm, I still am developing, you know, the concepts that I've uh, um, c come across as a result of working on it for 17 years but mm -hmm. um the limitations w were that it didn't hold up as well like people say the criticism mm -hmm. is true but mm -hmm. you can always go back in and reinforce it mm -hmm. and on my arms like this is all no outline tattooing mm -hmm. i think it looks really pretty yeah, yeah it's really but it does have to be revisited the edges have to be redefined and if mm -hmm. a client is willing to go through that in order to have the look then i think it should be an option in tattooing sure so there is a, a, a bit of negotiation when it comes to presenting that idea and mm -hmm. and i think typically speaking a first pass never really looks that great and i'm mortified when people go out into the world with a first pass and say I did it and that and they mm -hmm. I don't want anyone else to think it's done I want them to come back and let me layer it like you had said right. you approach your tattoos yeah I, yeah uh, so you've well let's let's talk especially at that point in time you're trying to tattoo you're trying to tattoo with a lot of color lining which, right and, and you know with uh, with, with say like a dark purple stencil trying to put a pink line that was through hard. it. Yeah. You don't know whether there's a line in there or not really. I mean right. whatever you're you, did you I mean that's that's obviously a struggle. How did you um that it was just seeing your healed work, revisiting, yeah. revisiting. Well, the truth. I switched to a gray line, so that makes oh, okay. a big difference. I mean, um, and the hardest thing was I would often start with purple lines because it was neutral. It could kind of mm -hmm. look dark, but still be soft and pastel for like seeing a build a flower's edge. Mm -hmm. But um, now I like to work with a gray line because it's fast and clean, and um, I know it's neutral also. There's no color edge to it, mm -hmm. so you can build it in any direction and see your composition more as a whole yeah. without the commitment of color. So that's been part of the evolutionary process. And I'm not against black anymore. I came. I came, yeah. I have a, a relationship. It's like Buddhist, you know, like the middle path. I'm, I'm good with it. I just don't overuse it, and I use it in edges and shadows rather mm -hmm. than as an outline defining the entire piece. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I, that's what I was going to ask. It's um, we've always thought that that tattoos had to have strong lines in order to live for a long time mm -hmm. in the skin, but really what they need is, is strong contrast well and, and strong shapes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I think we're learning more and more, especially with the new kind of generation of tattooers that didn't that aren't held to a lot of the standards that those of us that started tattooing in the 90s were, right. where it was just like, no, this is how you do it. Your, your outline goes in, then your shading, then your color, and then you're done. Like, right. you don't go back without outline. What do you, you know? Right. And uh, a lot of the younger tattooers are, that are really becoming established, I think, are proving that, like, man, there's no one way to do this. Right, and it's because of people earlier in tattooing that, paved the way just like the old timers paved the way for people like guy and you mm -hmm. know so and he paved the way for me and, and mm -hmm. we all paved the way for the next generation yeah. and i think it's important for people to know the history so that they can see how it's all we've all contributed in different yeah. ways yeah yeah um talk a little bit about uh, your your subject matter you do a lot of like geometry and yeah. floral a lot of combination of like uh, organic shapes and, and geometric shapes and and uh, and things like that what what drew you to that what got you D did you start out doing um, that? Well, before I uh, became a tattooist, I would I, I wanted to change my tattoos that I felt were kind of dark and I didn't really like them. So I would draw the same kind of idea over and over again. Like, this is what I'm going to do when I get lasered and I can get to my goals. And then um, I started realizing how long it would take to get lasered to have that look. Uh -huh. And that's what motivated me to want to also tattoo so I could see that look on other people. Right. So when people look at my work and they might think, oh, she tattoos the same thing on everyone. I don't. It's a style, just like Biomech is a style to what Guy does. It's, mm -hmm. it's an aesthetic based on some you know elements that I'm, I'm drawn to the mandalas like the sacred geometry or mm -hmm. what you described ge geometric patterns and the flowers are nature mm -hmm. and the way they resonate together is something um, that I really relate to visually yeah. and, and it's just pretty and it's easy on the eyes and yeah. looks good as a tattoo yeah I think yeah. what um, do you feel like uh, kind of learning to tattoo under guy and him being very kind of driven and stylistically in a specific way mm -hmm. did that influence you to to 
to gravitate towards this type of imagery early on and stick with it? Or do you think you would have done that no matter who you kind of came up around? Um, I don't think I would have tattooed the way I do if I didn't have the freedom to be experimental so mm. early. And, and he didn't, he never told me you can't do that. He just said, work harder, keep going. This is what he, his early criticism of my work was that it was very fragmented. The, you know, the shadows and the, the mm. shading didn't connect as well as it does now mm. 17 years later, which I understand, but um, he never criticized the style itself or the integrity behind why I wanted to do these things visually. He just gotcha. said, and, and also his his skill level, which is phenomenal, proves that um, anything's possible with the vision and the hard work and the craftsmanship to follow it through that, um, I guess, de devotedly like he's been doing for his uh, tattoo career so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, th this is a question that I ask of a, a lot of experienced uh, tattooers at, in a uh, and I'm always curious about, as someone who has a very defined style, a recognizable style that people see and they go, oh, I know Michelle did that. Yeah. Do you feel like um, younger tattooers that are coming up that uh, that they try to identify with a style too quickly, don't explore enough, feel like that they have to identify with something just to like get their foot in the door or make a name or get their Instagram following where they yeah. want it? Um, is... Uh, is uh, uh, are people like you, Guy, well, any number of people right. who... Uh, are you unintentionally ha influencing these people in a way that they feel like, well, if they're doing this and they are established and mm -hmm. that's the that's the approach that I have to take? I think they might feel that that's the approach they can take because it's, they see that all these styles are available to, to emulate or be inspired by or um, to, to mix and match their own personal preferences into. So they don't have the same restrictions as somebody starting tattooing 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. They can just jump in and be artsy and it will look good because they know how to render from all the information available and also the quality of tattooing that's being done right now. When you see that, th that amazing style of tattooing across the board, I think it's caused everyone to step up a couple levels. Yeah. I mean, even in small town America, I see really good tattoos. Right, right. And and we, we Guy and I talked a little bit about it in, in his interview that uh, that our clientele is becoming more and more educated. And right, well for the said. first time ever, people like can tell the difference between a really nice tattoo and a mediocre tattoo and a really terrible tattoo. Right. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, I think just not that long ago, which I don't know, time flies. Maybe it has been a long time, but I would, people would bring in tattoo reference to mm. me uh, before we were bringing them in our phones. And the references they were bringing, you would go like, oh my God, yeah. why would you bring that in here? They just had no idea. Right. They, that's all they, they knew just... or all they were exposed to. Yeah. 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 I think the media, social media has really also elevated um, tattooing and the knowledge people have. And even some of those um, shows like LA Inc., you know, people got to know tattooing in their living room and became mm -hmm. comfortable with it and then saw the wider, you know, world, I guess, of yeah. tattoos. Yeah. And, and probably became a little more comfortable with the idea of walking into a tattoo shop. I think yeah. you forget when you, when you work in that environment, how intimidating it really is to walk into a tattoo shop and sit down for a consultation and try to bring ideas to the table mm -hmm. and, and be afraid that you're, that you're going to sound like an idiot or they're going to get shot down or right. things like that. And if, if those types of shows have done anything or social media has done anything, um, I think the biggest benefit has been that it's it's given people like an inside look into what to expect. Yeah, except for yeah. you don't need a story to get tattooed. You people don't often story, think you do, yeah. but it's, you don't actually need a story yeah. to get tattooed. That's true. Well, I'm glad you, I'm <laughs> That's glad you brought thing. that up. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I feel like sometimes uh, people are offended that I don't ask them why they want right. what they want. I'm just trying to problem solve instantly. Right. And then I know they want me to be like, well, don't you want to know why we're doing this? Yeah. Like, oh. No, I don't guess I do. I don't guess I care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how it sits. Right. You're uh, respecting their personal boundaries. I'll <laughs> right. let you know if, if they need to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, as far as your, your painting, and these mm. are your paintings. Yeah, those are some of here. the early, those are some of the very um, first women that got uh, matching body sets from me. Yeah. And so you you do really nice portrait work. Uh, you've, you've never really tried to translate a lot uh, some of your, this kind of stuff to skin though, huh? Or have I, I haven't. No one has ever asked me, but I'm kind of glad because I would hate for it to not look like, I mean, portraits are yeah. so hard. All it is is one little curve of a corner of a mouth and it doesn't look like that mm -hmm. person. I, I'm, I'm, I'm of this, this sort of old school thinking, I guess, but I believe you should only get uh, portraits from portrait artists I just agree so that you. they look as good as possible and they really look like the person you're trying to represent. It's yeah. so critical. But yeah. I did do a dog portrait once that really looked like this. Uh, my client's dog. She asked me for out of the blue a dog portrait, and it was. I was like, "Don't say it's a portrait until we're done, so I can make sure <laughs> right. it really looks like your dog." Right. I think there's a, a whole set of challenges in portraiture that um, is its own challenge. I yeah, think. and I think you I don't just tread lightly on that. Right. You just yeah. pointed to the biggest. Um, one of the biggest parts of it, and it's the reason I think I've always avoided um, portraiture, is that um, the smallest mark, the huh. smallest uh, smallest inconsistency 
it still looks like a person, but it doesn't look like that person anymore. Right. And then you're taking something like, um, first off, you may be working from a photo of, of a loved one that they've spent, they have an ingrained image of what that person looks like in their mind. They bring you a photo that may or may not even really look like that person. You know, think right. about how many photos you see of yourself and you're like, really? That doesn't look like me. Right. Uh, and then you're wrapping it on such an imperfect surface. And I completely agree with you. Like there are so many challenges and there are already enough people that are that are drawn to that and, and, and solve those problems so effectively that there's no reason for me right. to jump in that game. I'm, I 500% agree. Yeah. And I, I'd yeah. rather leave it to the experts because it, the person who's seeking the portrait deserves it to look like the person they want it to look like. Yeah. Yeah. I would, but, yeah. but that said, you, you enjoy painting portraits even still? or do Yeah. You do well, it? I used to do portraits before a long time ago, before I was a tattooist. I used to be a hairdresser for a living and yeah. I painted um, on the side and I did a lot of portraits and stuff like that. And then um, I kind of had... I took a lot of abstract photography pictures and that inspired me to look at nature differently. And then I got really in touch with nature when we moved to the country and mm -hmm. started focusing on flowers and things that elevated my mood and mm -hmm. made me happy and portraits didn't make me happy. <laughs> it's just like, they were depressing. It was depressing to me if, if you tried to do a nice portrait of someone, they weren't, un they weren't flattered by it. Mm. You know, I was just yeah. like, well, I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I'll just stick with something that's pleasing to the eye, like a flower and it elevates my mood. And I, I think when people get tattoos of flowers, it, it's, it's a nice, feeling you know yeah 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 and they're timeless and they uh, th that type of subject matter it it um it, it can be um translated so many different ways yeah. and and uh it can be masculine and or approach. feminine black yeah. outline no outline right yeah right um uh, and, you know, you see a lot of people now, people like Jeff Gokwe doing flowers at these massive scales where like yeah. a single flower is that big and it becomes this giant you know, element that just is such a massive part or balances a dark area of a tattoo. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, they, you can do so much with them, I think. Um, I think so, too. I think it's uh, like a dragon and tattooing or koi. Mm -hmm. It's like graphically pleasing and universal in terms of who would like it. Yeah. 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 Um, for a second, we talked after the show, we talked a little bit with... Um, with Guy about this as well, but um, raising a, a daughter, two mm -hmm. artists raising a daughter in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Guy talked about you guys being a TV-free household. Yeah. How um, she's obviously um, bright and and engaged artistically, just yeah. from some, you know resin casts and yeah. mushroom foraging and things like Draw, that. Yeah. How um, what what's your approach? I mean, you guys seem like you're a good team dealing with kids. A lot of tattooers are are balancing family and tattooing yeah. nowadays. Well, uh, presently speaking, since we've had our daughter, uh, we co-parent, so we haven't done a lot of tattooing at the same time, you know, okay. so we're working towards getting back to that as she's getting older. Mm -hmm. uh, we lead by example, so we don't say you should draw because we do. We just draw and she joins us, mm. and I think that's that's really um, a significant thing is, is to make it fun. Don't make it feel, don't make, like we wouldn't want her to feel like she was ever in our shadow because we already, you know, how so some kids rebel against their parents because mm -hmm. they don't want to you know, I don't know. They want to have their own sense of identity. We want we want her to just do it because it's enjoyable. And I think art is maybe as you get to be an adult, one of the most um, one of the ways to preserve your childhood and your imagination as long as possible because yeah. it's free expression. So right, right. we try to encourage that as um, something that she wants to do, not something she has to do. Yeah, and and then just in whatever direction that she likes to take that, yeah. it can it can be anything. Anything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I, th I think that's. Uh, I was. We were just talking about a, an interview that I'd heard with uh, Seth Godin, and they were asking mm. him about how he would, if he were raising a kid again today, what would what would he do? And he said, "Well, I would still send them to private school. I would, or not to private school, to public schools. Yeah. I would, I would walk them to school if possible, as much as as much as possible. And um, and outside of that, I would just try to help them to solve interesting problems, right. problems that were interesting to them." And uh, that was such a profound thing for me to hear because it's like, wow, I don't even know what my I've got. A, I have a six year old. Oh, cool. Like, what are what yeah. what problems are interesting to him? Let's mm -hmm. start asking that on mm -hmm. a regular basis. You know what, what, you know what are you thinking about right now? What um, let's tackle a couple of problems that you think are worth tackling, yeah. and let's see if I can help you solve them. And uh, um, and then I think that way you're kind of like taking advantage of their natural curiosity and kind of helping to keep that in the forefront of their yeah. mind, nurturing it. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to take a page from you on that, and I'll try that tomorrow. Yeah, I'm curious yeah, to know how that <laughs> yeah, how, how that goes. Um, uh, so so you know moving forward. Uh, as far as um, the, the scale of the projects that mm -hmm. you're taking on, you do a lot of, um, um, you were talking about doing a lot of symmetrical work, yeah. working, you know, which is a, a, a different type of challenge. Right. Uh, um, I have a good story for you that kind of relates to all this. It's sort of, I don't know if it's in the context of what you were saying, but you might cool. like it. Um, so when I first started tattooing, I didn't have like a lot of like uh, good examples of my work under my belt because it was sort of embryonic early work that mm -hmm. was, you could see its potential if you could really see past the technical 
imperfections and uh one night philip lou was looking at my portfolio yeah and he's like looking at it and he's like <laughs> you know he's like you should you should just do like large scale body work you should just do like you know could you imagine this look if it's like all over the body and all over the arms it's just like this big overall look and i just looked at him i'm like oh my god i would love to do that but i mean i'm just doing body i'm just doing singular tattoos i'm just doing one thing at a time he goes you have to see the longer picture you know you have to, i yeah. could see you doing this and it was like when he said that to me even though i was struggling so much it was like someone believed in me and saw this longer vision that i kind of wanted for myself that i never thought i would ever get there yeah and now i'm doing it so i feel like he had such a um indirect inspiration for my not saying i can't do this and in achieving yeah. my goals artistically coming from such a master and seeing the longer term vision of what was possible in someone's very embryonic state. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is that, that is what kind of planted the seed for you or, or at least gave you the confidence to, to try to, uh, to approach larger scale work? Or um, did you I think start? it definitely helped. I mean, I, I always wanted to create like an overall look for tattooing because in the nineties and going back to the nineties, but it has, it's pivotal to, you know, yeah. our, our history. Uh -huh. Um, everything was so fragmented and like th here's a piece on the calf and here's the arm I had an armband here's an armband here's these singular pieces that were separate to everything else and I really la I really looked at it and, and wished it had more cohesiveness I wish it had an overall look so that was even before I was a tattooist mm -hmm. and then I wanted to maybe work towards that as a long-term goal you know like doing sleeves maybe matching it to the other side and then he's like I see the whole body yeah. and I'm like really oh that's awesome <laughs> I would love to do that so I, I think he had a, a lot to do with um inspiring me yeah what yeah. when when you moved to larger scale work, um, were, th were there any things that you n noticed? Um, did, did that help you, I guess, to, to, to really push your contrast to think in terms of larger shapes, things like that, as opposed to working in the small, uh, doing a lot of color yeah. work without a lot of black oh, yeah. work? Uh, did, do you feel like that that was something that helped, to, helped you to recognize some of the shortcomings of working in light, washy tones right. without a lot of contrast? Right, and the drawing style, not even all those mm -hmm. things and the drawing style. Yeah. Uh, I think just doing a lot of tattoos and looking at what I thought was successful and what I thought wasn't successful. And I think it's okay to have fragmented shapes as long as there's larger shapes supporting them. And maybe mm -hmm. some of my earlier work was nothing but small shapes or or it, it didn't fit the anatomy as well as it could have in hindsight. So yeah. um, I think the history of just doing more tattoos is what educated me the most. And also, of course, talking to a guy and hearing his feedback. He yeah. would tell me bigger shape all the time. Stretch, bigger shape, stretch, bigger shapes. Yeah. You know, stretching stopped after maybe the first two years of tattooing, but the bigger <laughs> right. shapes never stopped. Never stopped. He yeah. still says it. I've, yeah, <laughs> I, I, heard, uh, I heard him critiquing in, the, in yeah. Portland last year, and that was every every critique that they did. He was like, well, I would just try to make that biggest shape mm -hmm. just double the size of that biggest shape. Mm -hmm. You know, just everything was like, make that part bigger. Find right. something you can make bigger. And I think we talk a lot on the show about establishing a hierarchy uh, yeah. or you're like, find your star of the composition mm -hmm. and then make sure that you're driving people to that and explaining how they should move their eye through the, the composition. I think that's basically saying the same thing. Bigger shapes serve mm -hmm. that purpose uh, yeah. of, of like, hey, look at me, and then find your way through these that's other well elements. That's well said. And also, if you're, especially if you're working in low contrast or no black outlines, you really need that graphic clarity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it probably matters even more that you use larger shapes, yeah. um, staggered with smaller shapes. Um, yeah. Scale reference. Right. Like right. Japanese. You can apply the principles of Japanese tattooing to any style. Yeah. successfully when you look at what's great about it. Yeah. Talk, talk about that a little bit. What do you mean by, by scale reference? Of uh, well, topic? like when, when you look at Japanese art, there's a, like a nice balance of, of black to mm -hmm. um, skin space mm -hmm. and uh, bold shapes to small shapes like a giant koi with the small scales or mm -hmm. a, a large si size dragon with um, smaller details inside of it. Mm -hmm. That ratio of light and dark in uh, small to large you could take that and apply to any style of tattooing. Sure. And if you have elements of that equation in your tattoo, chances are you'll have a more successful tattoo than if you don't. Right, right. Whether you use black or a lot of black or not. Yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that that says a lot too. It helps... You know, you see someone walking down the aisle in the grocery store, and they, it, the shapes have to catch your attention before you care about any of right. the, the the little things that are going on within it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when you're when you think along those lines, you know, the, a, a nice variation of large and small shapes, dark and light shapes, you know, textural areas and and smooth areas and different things like that. I. Uh, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree that but that can be applied to anything. Another challenge, though, is clients don't always want that. Like some of my clients have deliberately – I had a client recently. She just wanted a half sleeve of nothing but small flowers, small flower. the hmm. whole entire piece. She didn't even want – I tried to negotiate just a little bit bigger of a flower to anchor it, and uh -huh. she was, oh, are you sure? I don't yeah. know, just a little bit bigger. So yeah. sometimes you are limited by your client's requests, yeah. even if you want to make it – maximize it more to what we were describing. Yeah, yeah. And what do you do in that kind of circumstance? Are you just thinking like, okay, well, these flowers are all a light shape, and there has to be a large dark shape of – 
something behind it? I mean, yeah. how do you how do you find a way to? Well, in her case, I just let it be movement. So I took mm-hmm. all the flowers and clustered them together and, mm-hmm. and made it about a strong diagonal mm-hmm. um, movement across her arm. Right. And then um, I've only worked on it twice, so d- I like to build it and layer it and create depth within the shape within the overall stream of flowers. Yeah. So it's a different way of approaching it rather than it being a large shape. It's it's just a directional movement that's yeah. a large you know flow because it's it's the whole diagonal of the arm but yeah. that was how I approached it in a way that I thought would look okay yeah are you I haven't watched you work a lot it, but it seems you work a lot with round configurations do you, you mean do round it? hand motions uh, or no round needle configurations? oh yeah well on the piece I'm doing right now because it's all what we just talked about uh-huh. it's a lot of small details but yeah. when it's done it'll have graphic separation because of the way I'm reserving the lights and darks and using black gotcha gotcha so you use yeah. a good balance of, of large mag groupings ideally I like to but I don't always do that it depends on the piece like what what I'm doing right now there's not a lot of room for mag work except for in the tree yeah and maybe the lunar moth at the bottom yeah yeah Yeah. on the other side she's got ganache and there is room for mag work there yeah I I gotta look at that one that's really nice and that one settled in and healed pretty well yeah how how long has that healed um I think she's had that for a little less than a year and um the front I I have this all area back here was just one pass so it's just kind of loose and then the front work I got to work a little more the last time she was here but it's still in progress Okay. Yeah. I like to layer like what you said. I like to layer a tattoo. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Let's try to get a little, if she doesn't mind, let's try to get a little bit of footage just so people will see what we're talking about. So okay. they're not just like, eh, what are you guys talking about? I can also uh, um, provide you with pictures if that'd you be want great. from yeah. anything we talked about. Yeah. 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 That'd be great. Um, talk for just a second about, and I know you got to get back to, to working on her, but her, uh, about your, your painting mm-hmm. uh, and what that, if anything, brings to your tattooing, how those two things work together for you. Yeah. Um, but, um, well, being a painter first, before I became a tattooist, I naturally approached tattooing like painting because that's all I knew. I didn't have a drawing style that was really linear and slow. And I drew the figure with like quick expression and mm-hmm. I kind of paint that way. And um, so it's j- difficult for me to take that and then control it in a tattoo. And a lot of people would be like, well, that explains why your early tattoos look the way they did. But I mean, they had artfulness in their huh. you know, approach because it was, di- I guess you could say different. I mean, I see people yeah. doing almost like deliberately sloppy tattoos now and it looks artful you know yeah yeah um i wasn't trying to make them sloppy i just that's all i knew (laughs) i I tried my best (laughs) yeah but um i I think i'm always going to think like a painter first because that's that's my foundation especially not using a black outline i'm not confining it in line space it's all form and shape and um i feel like the more i paint the more i can apply that into tattooing and and make my tattoos more sophisticated because my understanding of paint as i mature you know i feel Mm -hmm. like my palette's matured in painting and I feel like it's been also in tattooing. I don't use candy colors like I used to as much mm. anymore. And um, I, I'm interested in abstract spaces with mixed with flowers and, and nature mm-hmm. forms. I'm starting to do that more in my tattooing. So yeah. Um, yeah. they're kind of, there's a bridge between each other. Wh- yeah. What is your, what is your ratio of time spent painting to tattooing? Are they pretty equal? Um, would you say? Well, lately I've been painting a lot because I'm trying to do a bunch of paintings for a, a book for in time for Christmas, you know, oh, I hope yeah. I can get it done. But, um, after having a kid, I, I, all I could do was tattoo. I mean, I had no extra uh-huh. time. So yeah. I did manage to finish a few paintings while, um, you know, in Kaya's earlier years. But um, my focus has really just been on tattooing because it's uh, I have a commitment with the client. And, you know, I don't want to let them down. So I have to give it mo- the mo- majority of my energy when I'm focused on art. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit uh, towards the end of the interview with Guy about about the digital reinventing. And he mm-hmm. said that it was kind of your idea to bring that book to a to digital life. Mm-hmm. Um what, uh, if anything, has been your involvement in it, or if, if you're not directly involved in the creation of it, what, as as someone that's really close to it, um, what uh, um, what what are your thoughts on it? What do you What is your involvement in it? Well, um, I like to support Guy, um, you know, and just yeah. say, yeah, great idea, you know, and, and yeah, you you, know, you should explore that, or maybe you could try this and this variation. I like to be his springboard, you know, and, okay. and offer my opinion on stuff. I don't really like public speaking or mm. being too active in the education aspect. I don't mind this conversation, but like getting yeah. on a stage and yeah. talking to a lot of people, I get really um, uncomfortable, like shy, you know, and, and I would rather um, just help, just be supportive of, of what he's doing and know that I, I help inspire him and, um, yeah. you know, that we can work together to help tattooing and I feel like yeah. I've contributed, you know, but it's uh, it's yeah. subtle and, you know, I just, I don't know, it's been good. It's been good to be uh, his partner and uh, watch tattooing evolve to the level it has and know that he's had so much to do with it. it yeah, it, it has been such a, an incredible time to to be involved in, in this medium over the last, I don't know, 10 or 15, well, it's yeah. in, the, in the information age, I guess. Right. Uh, I, I guess that I, maybe I was just, I don't know, not paying attention or naive or didn't uh. understand what, what, um, 
what this information age would do for right. probably any for any industry or medium, but especially for one that I'd already been a, been working in. And it's just amazing, and it's cool to be a part of seeing yeah. where it's gone. And you guys have been a huge part of it. Uh, and uh, uh, it's just an exciting time to be a tattooer. It feels like um, the, the art, the art, the craftsmanship, and the art of tattooing is is just snowballing out into so many possibilities. Yeah. And, and I love to see that too. I love to see art on skin and. Mm-hmm. I feel like when Guy and I talk about tattooing, when when you see a tattoo, you don't look at it, you don't judge someone on whether they're tattooed anymore. You judge them on the quality of their tattoo. Right. So seeing the quality improve across the board because the skill level is so much higher than it was, like you said, 10, 15 years ago, that, that's also um, a great thing to be part of. And it keeps people yeah. on their toes, too. You can't never get too comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And what that just made me think, uh, We what, one thing that we're seeing now is uh, some... Um, Younger tattooers, we interviewed a guy last week that had been tattooing. How long had Cole been tattooing? Five, five six years? Huh. Um, that was uh, that came up in this kind of art-focused, art-driven huh. time of tattooing and is really has this like um, – romanticizes this era of tattooing that was just like street shop, oh, flash, wow. yeah. you know. And there's a – and so, of course, that's going to ebb and mm-hmm. flow. I but know, uh, yeah. it's I mean, really, I know about that too. Yeah, it's really interesting yeah. to see – to get opinions from people that – that came up in this era of tattooing and, and are now like, oh, man, I wish it was the way it was in the 80s and 90s. You know? well, people <laughs> also like, I think, also like guarded information and don't like mm-hmm. all of this information being shared because then it makes it easier for anyone to tattoo in their minds. Yeah. But there's still like, no matter how much you raise the bar, there's still that bar. So that means everyone has to try harder. I mean, right. maybe that not everyone likes that, but I feel like it, it's definitely creating, contributing to the evolution of the aesthetic of tattooing, which ultimately mm-hmm. represents all of us. Right. And that's how we're all seen. I mean, it's like, People look at us now like we're artists. We're not, mm-hmm. you know, like these, I don't know what words to use without offending anyone, but it's, it's, it's like uh, it's elevated the presence of what a tattoo is to, er- to everyone, whether yeah. you like old school, Japanese, biomech, all pastel flowers. And yeah. so sharing information it, it only the proper way right. only um, elevates the enti- everyone in the entire industry. Right. And, right. and if people like to be guarded about information and like to preserve a certain aesthetic as the only aesthetic, that sort of like limits the possibilities of what it could become. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, absolutely, I absolutely agree. And I feel like uh, in the 90s, whenever I started, whenever you started, mm-hmm. there were a lot of trades people. And that's, that's why we yeah. still use the term tattooer, like right. welder, or plumber, right. whatever people that, that have a solid understanding of how to use a, a specific tool didn't necessarily make them artists. As a matter of fact, most of the tattooers I knew in the mid nineties were not really artists. Right. They were pretty good at handling a tattoo machine and yeah. mimicking something that someone else had drawn. And, that's uh, also what set guy apart in that, in the nineties. Absolutely. Because yeah. he had the art. Too, yeah. The yeah. There, line. there weren't a lot of people, uh, a lot of people approaching it that way. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, right. I'm sure there's there's a place for trades people that don't really draw that well. Right. Yeah. And draftsmen. I mean, their mm-hmm. technical skills more yeah. than make up for maybe the lack of an, ar- an individual artistic vision. But when you combine those two, yeah, then that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think everyone has, has room to grow, though, artistically, and whether you're no matter where your level is and what your interests yeah. are. Yeah. And and I, th- I guess no matter how you feel about what, say, what we do on the show or what you guys are doing with mm-hmm. um, uh, w- with tattoo education, uh, uh, about how, how we educate artists, uh, whether you feel like it should be uh, guarded or whether you feel like it should be open sourced um, – uh, we still, the cream is still going to rise to the top, to the yeah. top, no matter what. And we're all forced with the same challenge of, okay, there's the bar now for what I do. You right. know what I mean? We're all, and I, and like you said earlier, that's that's got to be what it's about. You can't hold down uh, artists in the hopes that you know that that you remain viable. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's how it's almost like a metaphor for life on a larger scale. The world keeps spinning, right. and people keep are born with fresh energy, and you know. Contr- you know are ready to tackle tattooing and it's a yeah. cycle but i feel like if you stay true to yourself and you're good with your clients that you can nurture that for a long time yeah yeah uh, to find your work do people just go to tattooeducation.com do you have a um, specific uh, michellewortman.com so, Michelle or hyperspacestudios.com right. and i'm also on instagram and facebook cool and if you if they want to book and uh, uh are, there's are an appointment book- button on uh, cool. michellewortman.com or okay. they can just uh, send me an email and uh, contact me and we can talk about their project ideas. Yeah. 
And it truly is like uh, it's like an experience. It's not just going to get a tattoo. This place is super cool, and then it's worth you know. I think you would come here, spend a weekend, you know, stay if there's some place nearby, stay there or sleep in the woods. Maybe yeah. I don't know. I don't know. And there's then, one more soundbite. Can I offer you one more? Yeah. I forgot to mention my project that I'm working on. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm working on a project called the Bloom Project, and I've been working on it uh, pretty much since I started tattooing. I had this idea for a project, a concept that I wanted to do, and that also ties into the style of tattooing I do in education. Um, uh, the, my, my Bloom project is basically uh, the clientele that I have. I, I, a lot of my clients have been coming to me for 10 or 15 years and since I started tattooing and their mm -hmm. tattoos have gone from little shoulder caps to like almost every woman in, in, in these paintings here started with shoulder caps that expanded mm -hmm. to full sleeves and yeah. a lot of my clients have a journey like that. So I've been documenting their process and the huh. Bloom project is metaphor for a flower unfolding in the different stages of personal growth and development and yeah. transformation. So um, my concept for tattooing when I'm, when I'm working on like guys thing is his biomech i mean he does other things too but you know he's mm -hmm. he, people know him for his biomech mm -hmm. um is this project in in documenting my clientele and every time i tattoo them it's just a continuation of where we left off and huh. and they're eventually when the book is i'm doing a book and it's it's also kind of like a group but um it will tell their story if the people who have really dedicated hours here and and show their collection and show all their yeah. stages of their journey that's so. a great idea it's a great way to kind of like uh, uh, highlight your your clientele that yeah. too that's awesome uh what where does it sit right now in completion is it uh, um, i could do the book tomorrow i mean i oh. have enough material and but i want to keep going with it and see how how much material i can collect and maybe get some new clients that i haven't tattooed yet and, and then yeah. when people look at this book they can also see my personal journey and how it evolved over time and yeah. layers just like the metaphor of a flower yeah and what a valuable thing to you to be able to see your work from 10 12 15 years ago and build directly off of it yeah. and we were talking about seeing what works and what doesn't and being able to revisit stuff um there's really nothing like seeing your healed tattoos it's like the ultimate truth teller it is <laughs> it's, it's not really always nice. pretty no but thankfully sure. i can go back in i mean i want to yeah. say one thing about the yeah. no line pastel look is you can go you can make it stronger and bolder with layers and yeah. some of that stuff i l deliberately leave um dissolved and fallen out and let it be like a hazy mm -hmm. background that's almost like out of focus and then i bring focus into some areas so I can, i'm able to push and pull with that foundation even from something that old yeah yeah that's so. awesome where do people go to learn more about that project um about that's all, it's mentioned on both all those things all i told you about the okay. um michellewartman.com, Instagram, and Facebook. And gotcha. you can read about the, co there's like more philosophy than what I threw you, but I just wanted yeah. to mention it because yeah. it awesome. ties into education too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll yeah. let you get back to your tattoo. Okay, I thank really you appreciate for the time. Yeah. taking the time thank to you. ask me and the this questions. Place is awesome. yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Go follow Michelle Wartman uh, and subscribe to us, tattooimprovement.com and tattoo improvement on all the social medias. Thank Thanks. You.